Hello and welcome to an introduction on Lagrange multipliers. To make a very simple drawing, in blue I have shown the function f, which is in xy, and in red the function g, also in xy, just two variables here. And we're watching the level curves of the f function intersect with the curve of the constraint function g. And reminiscent of seeking a maximum in a previous unit, we want to see where the two intersect such that the, the value of the function is maximized. Instead, here at point P, AB, we're going to see that the gradients for the function F and the function G are parallel. And we're going to make a statement that these gradients are indeed equal if and possibly necessarily that we have a, a, a factor lambda that uh, makes them equal. So we're looking for the place where they're parallel because that would be the maximum value, it's sort of like finding the maximum value, um, but it's where the gradients are parallel, thus um, ensuring that the constraint is met. We're going to um, remember a problem from Calc 1, a simple one we started with back then, a couple semesters ago, two numbers add to 100, and we're looking the, for the two that would make the largest product. So adding to 100 puts a constraint on the situation. The two numbers, x and y, add to 100, and we're going to call that the g function, the constraint, and we need to write constraint functions such that they are set equal to zero. So we're going to have x plus y minus 100 equals zero. Our objective function is to make the largest product. So our f function is going to be x times y. And we're going to take the gradient of f, the gradient of g, and then lambda times the gradient of g. So remember that gradients are just um, the function's derivative with respect to x in front of the i component, the function's derivative, um, the partial derivative with respect to y in front of the j component, likewise for g, and then once we get this gradient for g, we're going to multiply by lambda. And so we ended up with three equations, two of which we're going to equate because that's our premise. So it's y in front of the i, x in front of the j, this is from del f, and this is del g times lambda. And the components have to be equal if the equation is equal. So y delta i, or excuse me, y lambda i are equal and the j components, x, uh, j, and lambda j, hat, are equal. So this means that y is equal to lambda, x is equal to lambda, and we're going to eliminate the middleman. So x is equal to y. Subbing back into the constraint function, we see that x equals y equals 50. And if we put this into our f function, we would get that maximum product. But here we're just practicing a technique. Here is a Lagrange done by a method um, taught in Math 217, the business analysis class. And some of my Calc 3 students like this method, so I'm going to show it to you early on. And we just have some equations given to us. A function in x and y is minus x cubed plus 3x plus 4y minus y squared and some constraint function is minus 2x plus y. So the first thing is to define a new function, cap f of x, y, lambda. So here's our f function and lambda times our constraint function, all put together. And then the second step is to compute the partials, our cap f function with respect to x, y, and lambda. And we get these uh, partials, minus 3x squared plus 3 minus 2 lambda for f sub x, f sub y is 4 minus 2y plus lambda, and f sub lambda looks pretty much like the constraint function. 
Then you take each of the partials and set them equal to zero and try to dig out some valuable information. Like here, we found that this is what lambda is equal to. Over here, we found out this is what lambda is equal to. And then solving the last partial, we found y equals 2x, a relationship that we'll certainly use. So then to work on the algebra here, I'm going to show you another board. So now we're going to set our lambdas equal to each other. And doing a little bit of algebra, we come up with y equals minus 3x squared plus 11 over 4. And we know that y is equal to 2x. So 2x must equal this expression for y. And do a little bit more algebra. And believe it or not, it factors, giving us x equals minus 11 thirds and x equals 1. Now what we do with that information is we need to find the y that goes with it because we have a function in x and y. So using y equals 2x, we have our x and twice that for y, our x and twice that for y. Um, so now we need to plug these in and find out which one's a relative max and which one's a relative min. And you plug them back into the f function. So here's an example of f uh, evaluated at 1, 2, and it gives us a 6, which you see here. So comparing just these two values, we label this a relative max and this one a relative min.